Hello, tonight's flip lesson is all about climographs. What are climographs and how do geography, geographers use them to predict and analyze climate and weather patterns? Be sure to have your task sheet out in front of you so you are able to take notes and answer questions as we go through. Remember, you can always pause the video to record your responses before moving on. This is a climograph. A climograph consists of two graphs in one. The purpose of a climograph is to demonstrate average climate conditions, particularly involving precipitation and temperature. Notice along the bottom horizontal axis there are a series of letters. These 12 letters represent the months of the year, starting with January and ending in December. Each column is representing average monthly precipitation and temperature for each of the months. On the left-hand vertical axis is precipitation. Precipitation is measured in millimeters. And on the right-hand vertical axis of the graph, you have temperature, which is measured in degrees Celsius. Precipitation is shown on your climate graph with the blue bars. Precipitation graph is always a bar graph, and it's always blue. Temperature is shown on your graph as a line graph. This line graph is always red. This is a data table. This is what geographers and climatologists will use to construct climate graphs. Notice that in your climate data table, you are given two main pieces of information, average monthly temperature for each month of the year and average monthly precipitation for each month of the year. This is the data we use to create climate graphs. When we create climographs in this class, you will be given a similar looking table, and it will be your job to take this information and turn it into a climograph like we were just looking at. As we discussed, there are key components of a climograph. A blue bar graph representing precipitation and a red line graph representing te temperature. In this regard, there's no room for creativity. The bars are always precipitation in blue and the line graph is always temperature in red. Also notice that the letters at the bottom of the graph always start with January and end with December. This is so we always know exactly what month we're looking at without writing out the name in whole. Pause the video and take a minute on your task sheet, you're being asked to brainstorm reasons why you think that climographs need to be created in a universal manner. In other words, why do all climographs need to follow the same rules? Take a minute and jot down some of your ideas. How do we draw a climograph? Climographs can be drawn by hand or using various computer programs and software. In our course, we will be using Excel primarily as our technological, technological program to draw climographs. Regardless of how the graph is created, the standard rules still apply. Watch the video below to learn how a climograph is created and what they tell us about a, climate, a region's climate. Climate graphs are useful for identifying climate patterns in a location. They consist of a blue bar graph representing rainfall for each month of the year and a red line graph representing the temperature. By examining a climate graph you can identify the temperature range, the seasonal distribution of rainfall and how much rainfall falls in a place. Today I am going to show you how to construct a climate graph. First we need some climate data. In the table on the screen there is a data table for New Orleans in the United States. This data has maximum average temperature data measured in degrees Celsius and rainfall data measured in millimeters. First you must use a ruler to draw your X and your two Y axes. We will divide the X axes into 12 for the different months of the year and then label them January to December. On the left hand y axis we will plot the temperature in degrees Celsius. Since 33 degrees is the highest temperature in the table, we will number the y axis from 0 to 36. 
On the right hand Y axis we'll label the rainfall in millimetres from 0 to 180. Now we will draw bars for the rainfall and colour them in blue. Now we'll use a red pen to plot the temperature data. Make sure we centre the dots in between each bar before connecting them to turn it into a line graph. Give your graph an appropriate title. Now we have finished, observe any patterns from the data. The following patterns can be identified from this graph. New Orleans has high rainfall and temperatures in the summer months and lower rainfall and cooler temperatures in the winter months. New Orleans has a maximum average temperature range from 17 degrees Celsius to 33 degrees Celsius. The purpose of climate graphs is to allow geographers and climatologists to make predictions and analyze basic climate information in a fairly clear and concise way. By looking at a climate graph, we can determine, for example, the type of climate, whether it's maritime or continental, east coast or west coast. We can also determine if the, that particular loca location has a wet or rainy season, or perhaps a dry season. In order to determine the temperature range, you're going to use your climate graph and determine what the highest temperature is and the lowest temperature is to calculate what the temperature range of that location would be. Again, the temperature range will confirm for you whether or not this climate is maritime or continental, east coast or west coast. Lastly, they allow us to make predictions about weather patterns and norms. To predict, for example, seasonal changes, uh, cold times of year versus warm times of year, rainy and dry seasons as mentioned earlier as well. This concludes our flip lesson on climate graph. Please take a couple minutes to summarize the lesson in a couple sentences and to pose a question.